for seeing that we have this ministry. All you got to do is As we have received mercy, is. we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, Lord. not walking in practice, nor handling the word of deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them, which we believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, to shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Jesus keep me near the cross there's a prayer It's free to all. a healing, healing stream. Just beyond, beyond the river, the river. Oh, in the Oh, in Is gonna find rest. Rest beyond, it's beyond the river. The river. Oh, in the
yes it will yes yes one of these old days there's gonna be rest we won't have to worry there'll be no more heartaches there'll be no more pain no more sickness no more death he'll give rest the devil won't be on your track there's gonna be rest One of these no days you won't need glasses There'll be no more pain There'll be no more heartache You won't have to cry no more
to praise. Praise Him. We want to praise. Praise Him. 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 Every time. For 10 seconds, I want your praise to match your blessing. Hallelujah.
Every time I get a chance. Not that you ought to, I'm going to tell myself. Every time I get a chance, I'm going to give him praise. Because I'm a witness, I know how far he's brought me. I'm a living witness about what God can do. Praise him. Tell your neighbor, if you knew my testimony, you would understand my praise. Oh, God. He didn't have to do it, but he did. First John chapter five, verses six through 12. Tell your neighbor, I thank him for turning my situation around. Oh, God. 
Run. Is it music? Oh my God, yes. Yeah, man, thank you. Thank you. In 1 John, this book dealt with three L's. Love, life, light. When we get to chapter 5, he's dealing with life. Jewish tradition, there needed to be two or three witnesses to establish any fact or truth. Verse 6 says, and this is he that came by water and blood even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Remember that during this time, there was a lot of falseness going on in the world. And you can't believe every spirit because there's some spirit that's not of God even though it looks like it could be the spirit of God. And the only way that you are able to discern truth is by the truth. Don't allow your relationship with God to be based just on feelings because feelings change but the word of God never changes and this he that came by water and blood the water represents baptism the blood represents his death there are two types of witnesses, the external witness and the internal witness. The external witness is verses 6 through 9. The internal witness is 10 through 12. The external witness, the water and the water baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ. For when that soldier pierced Jesus in the side, came out water and blood. There is no salvation in water. But the reason why we are baptized is because of obedience. We need to be obedient to the word of God. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things 
whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. A commandment given by the Lord Jesus Christ. The water represents the grave. And when we baptize an individual, it's symbolic of this individual going down in the grave. And when we take him under the water, that represents his burial. But then when we take him out of the water, it represents the newness of life. I'm glad that Jesus got up out of that grave that we might have a right to the tree of life. The blood represents his death. For without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. And the spirit beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. You don't find the word Trinity written in the Word, but the concept of Trinity can found, be found in many places in the Word. The Father, the Word, according to John, and the Word became flesh, and that was Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There are people who have problems with the Trinity because they believe that we're talking about three different gods. One God, three distinct personalities. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Let's go to Jesus' baptism. Look at Jesus in the water. There's a voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then the Bible says that a dove descended from heaven and rested upon this setting. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. These three agree in one. You will never hear about the Trinity having an argument. Because the three are one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God which he had testified of his son. If you don't believe me, at least believe God. How many believe whatever God says is true? 
How many of you really believe whatever God says is really true? And if it's true, then why we have so many people trying to twist the word to get it to say what they wanted to say. But his promises are yea and nay. And I believe we can stand on the promises of God. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. Do you know who lives on the inside of you? God, the Father. God, the Son. God, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of each one of us. Can you really imagine that God is so big that he can hold the whole world in his hands and then become so small that he can live on the inside of each one of us. What a mighty God we Sir, my, 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 that, that excites me that God lives on the inside of me and he that believeth on the son of God has the witness in himself, the Holy Spirit is our witness. Who's ever been convicted by the Spirit? And how many of you know he don't wait till you sin before he starts convicting? In your very thought pattern, he'll let you know, oh, holy, that, that's not right. Even in your thinking, God will correct you. I want to see the hands of anybody in who ever plotted evil besides me. Let me see your hands if you've ever plotted evil. Who's ever, and got to be honest, who, whoever in this room has ever carried it out Now, if you don't raise your hand, you're lying. <laughs> but there's been more times that he didn't let me carry it out. Is there anybody glad that he didn't let you carry it out? Because if you really would have carried it out, you wouldn't be sitting in here this morning. You be behind somebody's bars. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. How many of you ever had the Lord to slap you in the mouth? Because you was getting ready to say something that wasn't going to bring any glory and honor to Him. Thank God. For the Holy Ghost. He'll guard your mouth. He'll hold your tongue. Where you won't say what you wanted to say. And later on you say, Lord, thank you. For not allowing me to dishonor you. Remember one thing. Sin is always against God. Always against God. Even the sin that we may do in secret is still 
against You think it, but you don't bring it to pass. Your thoughts were sinful. Brothers, since you still have eyes, you can see. But I want you to know you can't carry out everything that your eyes may see. Sisters, <laughs> you know. But it's like everything else. How many have been to a restaurant lately within the last two years? How many of that when you go to a restaurant, they give you a menu? There's a lot of things on the menu. You can't order everything. And everything on that menu is not for you. So you just have to be careful. You can look at the menu. You just can't order everything. And some have been ordering some stuff from the menu that messed up their system. You know it was against your system. But how many you know that sometimes you look at the menu and it looks so good? Amen. And you think you got to have it. But some of that stuff will mess up. How many have ever been messed up? Some of that stuff on that menu will mess you up. Tell your neighbor, don't tell them too loud, but tell them softly. It'll give you the run. Have you running from this person to the next person to the next person? I mean, it's in here. I don't know where y'all looking at me like, where you get that from? Verse 10, he that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. Tell your neighbor, don't mess up this scripture. Don't mess up this scripture. Because some people won't read the Bible. But what they do is read our lives. They read us. And because we claim to be believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, some of them can't separate that we are spirit 
and flesh. And sometimes our flesh get out of control. And that's why the Lord tells us we got to crucify it daily. You got to put him to death daily. But you know what the only problem is? The next day, he gets back up. And here you done did all day wrestling and struggling and fighting. At the end of the day, you said, oh, God gave me victory. And then he'll mess with you in your sleep. I remember one time, let me stop lying, more than one time. <laughs> Victorious day in Jesus. And then you go to sleep. And he'll mess with you in your sleep. And I found out that you can't say the devil made you do it because some of it's you. And two or three times, I was getting ready to get to the good part. And the Lord woke me up. And you won't believe how many times I tried to get back to sleep to get right there to that part again. And the Lord put me in the church and a mother talking about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Young people, I want you to know you can't play with the devil. Can't play with this flesh either. Because it will get out of control. And this is the record. That God has given to us eternal life. And the life is in his son. If you don't have it highlighted or marked, can you highlight eternal life? Because some people believe you can have it on Sunday and lose it Monday. And then try to get back to it on Saturday. So you'll be good for Sunday. Go to St. John. Chapter 3. Beginning at verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever Believeth in him should not perish, but have what kind of life? 
eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. God, thank you for your word to remind us, and we know it's true, that when you got ready to do something evil, it really wasn't in the daytime so everybody could see you. It was at night. Or if it was in the day, you pulled down all the shades, closed all the curtains. If it was in the day, you didn't blast the caravans or Roberta Martin or Mahalia Jackson. You turned down the music, and you want to hear Luther. Okay, come on back real quick. Because some of you went right there, right then. Because our deeds were evil, we wanted dark. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. And verse 12 is the most important verse. He that has the son has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. This morning, all I want to do is invite you. Get a life. Growing up, many of us thought life was different things until we accepted Christ. And now we know what real life is. Before, we thought we didn't have life unless we had a whole lot of money. Now that we have Christ, we can be broke and still have life. Before you thought you needed a whole lot of friends. With Christ, what a friend we have in Jesus. One who will never leave you nor forsake you. Before, you thought you had to have steak and shrimp in order to have it going on. But when I have Christ, 
I can get by with hot dogs and beans and enjoy Jesus every step of the way. Because sometimes that's all I have. And still enjoy Jesus. How many haven't always lived where you live? But you were grateful for wherever God had you placed. And I thank God today I got Jesus. And every time I get a chance, I'm going to give him some praise. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, you know what? I'm glad I've learned I can shout on a cloudy day. Don't have to be sunshine all the time. Because I know that the storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Get a life. And the life is in Jesus Christ. He that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son has not life. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad I got life. Tell somebody else, like you know it on your face, I'm glad I got life. And you wonder, but I guess I don't have to wonder, because I used to be like that myself. I thought that the folk that was going to church was all phony. I thought the folk that was going to church, that couldn't really be what church was about. Because I saw in one place on Sunday, and I saw them somewhere else Saturday. And you know what I found out? How can I judge them if I'm at the same place doing the same thing. But now that I got life, I'm satisfied with Jesus. I just want him to be satisfied with me. Anybody in here satisfied with Jesus? I mean, really satisfied with him. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. I'm satisfied with him. And you know what? If he don't do another thing, he's already done enough. If he don't do not one more thing, he's done enough when he gave his life that I might have a right to the tree of life. Thank God I got life. And the life is in Jesus Christ. Let's bow in prayer.